When there's violence, when there's conflict, when there's a war, people run away. Sometimes they run across a national border and they're considered refugees. Sometimes they can't make it to a national border. The violence is too intense. They can't escape. Those people who are displaced within the borders of their own com country are internally displaced persons or IDPs. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the plight of the world's internally displaced persons. They run from war, from famine, from floods, from earthquakes, but are trapped in the very countries they're trying to escape. These are the world's internally displaced persons, or IDPs. There are tens of millions of IDPs in countries around the world, and compared to refugees who flee from one country to the next, they often have few rights and even less assistance. More must be done to help these desperate people, notes senior fellow Elizabeth Ferris. Beth, IDPs can actually be more vulnerable than refugees in, in many cases. I mean, oftentimes they're fleeing from situations that their governments have created. So what then? They turn to their governments, but sometimes it's their governments that's displacing them, such as Sudan and Darfur. And, you know, they are dependent on the very government that sometimes creates conditions that forces them to leave their homes. Sometimes they work with local or assisted by local NGOs, non-governmental organizations or civil society. In some cases, international organizations can be helpful, but it always depends on whether or not that government will allow international organizations to provide assistance. So IDP is generally much more vulnerable than refugees. They're closer to the violence. They're dependent on their government to protect and assist them. International standards and definitions are much weaker for IDPs than they are for refugees. How well are we meeting the needs of IDPs? We're getting better. We're responding more quickly, more effectively to people who are displaced, whether it's by conflict or by um, natural disasters in particular. You know, the, the system is getting better. The problem is, is that it's all becoming more political, if you will, the challenges of keeping people safe. We can deliver food and water really, really well, but we're not very good at keeping people safe. So in Haiti, for example, the um, sexual and gender-based violence increased dramatically after the earthquake. Even now, the homicide rate in Haiti is 60 times what it was before the earthquake. You know, We can make sure that people are well-fed and receive medical care, but protecting them is much more difficult. In times of strife, there's a lot of confusion and things can easily fall apart. So are there some populations who are really more vulnerable than others? Gender is a big issue. Women, particularly young women, are at risk of sexual and gender-based violence. We're increasingly concerned about the elderly, particularly in natural disasters. Sometimes people just don't think about issues of mobility. Uh, we saw after Hurricane Katrina, for example, the majority of fatalities were older people. The same was true in the Japanese earthquake, tsunami, and so on. But, you know, getting our system set up to meet the needs of an increasingly aging population in the world is a real challenge. People are thinking about kids. There are specialized agencies that, that deal with children, such as Save the Children and UNICEF, that have, you know, long years of experience of working with children and trying to keep them safe and address their needs. Some of the other groups, people with disabilities, are just beginning to receive the kind of attention that's needed. Hurricane Katrina, which struck the Gulf of Mexico in 2005, is actually the face of the United States failing its own internally displaced persons. Over a million, perhaps as many as 1.5, 1.7 million Americans were displaced by Hurricane Katrina. They were internally displaced persons under the generally accepted international definition. But the U.S. government didn't use the term IDPs calling them first refugees, and then when there was a protest by particularly African-American leaders saying, wait a minute, we're Americans, we're not refugees, um, using the term evacuee. Now the term IDP carries with it certain rights and obligations, that the term evacuee has really no standing in international law. So America had its own IDPs, and you know they've had exactly the same problems, or at least very similar problems, as those in different parts of the world. There are problems with finding solutions. There was disenfranchisement of people who were displaced and weren't able to participate in the political life of New Orleans, for example, six months after the after the hurricane hit. There were discrimination and evacuation plans, I mean, evacuation plan based on private cars. 
I mean, who, who does not benefit from that? You know, where do people go if they um, are evacuated? Uh, conditions in the shelters was, uh, was abysmal um, for a variety of reasons. Problems of coordination on the state, local, the national level. These are problems that the U.S. has historically pointed out in other countries when they run into difficulties. Um, but here we had exactly the same thing happening in the U.S. Now, I think the U.S. has improved its policies on almost every level since and has learned from its mistakes in Katrina. Beth, are we motivated by a moral or a strategic imperative, perhaps, to help people in crisis? I would like to think that everybody is motivated by pure humanitarian principle and altruism and a suffering person is something that you want to respond to. And indeed, the world has responded very generously to the images that we see on our television. The problem is we don't see all the images. We don't hear about people in a lot of conflicts, for example, um, who may be suffering tremendous casualties. They just don't make it to our TV screens. So we respond really well, say, to a Haiti or a tsunami um, where the media images are there, but, but not so effectively when the numbers are smaller or they're more hidden. So that's one issue. Another is that perhaps inevitably the response to disasters is tinged with politics, that we tend to be more helpful to countries that are, that are nearby. So the U.S. played a more leading role, say, in Haiti, as did Canada, in comparison with Europe, just because of distance. We were much more active with Hurricane Mitch in Central America, whereas um, European countries tend to be uh, more supportive of countries that are physically closer to them or more culturally linked um, to them. Sometimes there's a strategic interest. You know, when you look at the amount of humanitarian assistance we're providing in Afghanistan, for example. You kind of figure it out on a per person basis and compare it with Democratic Republic of Congo or Central African Republic. There are vast differences. I mean, clearly the U.S. has a strategic interest in making sure people are well fed and safe and get medical care in Afghanistan and don't feel the same compulsion in other places. And what do we need to do to make the process better and easier to facilitate to help IDPs around the world? There are at least 60 countries in the world that have large numbers of internally displaced persons. According to our data, only 20 or 22 of them have laws on internal displacement. You would like to see the governments of countries that have IDPs to develop good laws on, on it. Ideally, you'd like a world where there aren't any more IDPs, where measures are put into place to prevent people from having to leave their homes. I think a lot more needs to be done on reducing the risk of disasters, not just in poor countries, but in rich countries like the United States as well, um, to really plan the response to reduce the risk of flooding. There are a lot of concrete things that, that can be done in this country. So there's a lot more work to be done, but we've come a long way since the guiding principles were developed uh, 20 years ago. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.